a middle school in Young, just like thousands of others in France. Julian Malherb chose to teach in a priority education zone. Everyone knows him here, he teaches third grade history. However, he owes his fame to Star Wars. In this unique class in France, we learn history through the Jedi and Darth Vader, the mythical characters of the saga. We're going to start the Star Wars project. We're going to look at the special links that Star Wars may have with totalitarian regimes. The two characters we're going to be interested in are Hitler and Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine, the Dark Lord in Star Wars, a dictator who reigns terror like Hitler. The long-awaited moment has come. Execute Order 66. In Star Wars, as Palpatine is going to launch Order 66, what word did you retain? Palpatine says he will exterminate and hunt down the Jedi. If we say that Palpatine is Hitler, then who are the Jedi? Finally, Palpatine, if you keep it simple, equals Hitler. But who are the Jedi? Half of the class has never seen a George Lucas movies. The teacher doesn't mind. This diehard fan even takes some liberties with the curriculum. You tell them about the Ewoks. Everyone knows the Ewoks. We might not know it's in Star Wars. Are you sure you're not too big a fan? Have you never dreamed of having one in your room as a child? I wanted to have one in my bed. My parents refused, but it was my dream. The project may seem a bit far-fetched, but the results are there. The class is much more attentive. My colleagues and I realized that the students who were often the least involved and struggled the most had found a new work dynamic. They were more inspired by what we were doing in class and were more motivated. Clearly, Star Wars can help priority education areas. Two hours later, the students have learned their lesson. May the Force be with you. Soon in theaters, the sequel to the biggest space adventure in cinema. The first images of the trailer have been seen 68 million times on YouTube. This is a sign that the Star Wars fever is not about to subside. A seventh one is coming. That's crazy. Yoda, in any case, is one of these heroic figures that society needs today. With the launch of this new trilogy, Disney, now the rights holder, will conquer a new generation of fans. Today, its imaginary universe is already having surprising impacts in reality. Like this Jedi school, a unique place in the world where you learn to use the lightsaber, a discipline that is coming to France. We're not going to lie to each other. It's super fun to fight with a lightsaber. <laughs> Mastery of force, meditation, or even knowledge, values which some disciples have adopted to create a whole new religion, Jediism. In Jediism, there is the idea that the living being is motivated by a force, by a creative energy. Immerse yourself in the Star Wars galaxy. In this very small village, 45 kilometers from Lil, Thomas, 24, is the embodiment of this new generation of Star Wars fans. Don't try. Do it or don't do it. There is no trial. This well-known voice is that of his favorite character, Yoda, the sage of the saga and the most powerful of the Jedi Masters. For 10 years, they have been sharing a room. These are pages from my English notebooks. When I was 15, I had a lot of trouble with English. It's still the case, and I was pissed whenever I had to sit for entrance exams. I ripped up pages from my English notebook and made balls from it. One thing leading to another, I made a head and ears. Then gradually, I added plaster and lo and behold, I made Yoda. In his bedroom, he recreated the intergalactic universe of the movie. At eight years old, he saw in his first episode and identified with the Jedi, the Knights of Peace. Since then, he has been recreating objects from the saga. Each time a movie is released, he creates a new one. He's called BB-8. Star Wars fans discovered it during the first trailer of episode seven. It only appears for a few seconds. 
The Jedi Apprentice mostly awaits the return of the Millennium Falcon, the mythical ship flown by Harrison Ford and his furry friend Chewbacca. Chewie, we are home. I think that every Star Wars fan on the planet, when they saw Harrison Ford and Chewbacca, there were some who were totally amazed, some screaming, some crying. Sometimes it's quite impressive. I was speechless and didn't talk for a few minutes. <laughs> this young physics and chemistry teacher lives with his parents, who saw him go from papier-mâché to lightsaber manufacturing. Today he is going to forge the handle of his weapon by himself. It's his first attempt. It's part of Jedi training to make one's own lightsaber. I think it's cool. Dad, is the mold ready or not? No. As always, Thomas can count on his father for help, the aptly named Luck, not a Jedi. He is a landscape designer. He has always encouraged his only son in his passion. For me, I like it because it is a healthy passion. It gets his imagination going, so every week we get a surprise. He's a better handyman than me, but it's true that maybe I'm more gifted in electronic work, etc. We can say I am the one funding these experiments because, at the end of the day, they're expensive. This is the decisive moment. The oven has reached 400 degrees, the right temperature for forging. Dad, can you bring the mold, please? But today, the force is not with them. Don't put your head over it. The physics teacher missed his shot. The heat is not strong enough to be able to melt the whole thing. So I just made a nice cork. It's not a big deal. A precept in the Jedi code says, there is no ignorance, only knowledge. It's by making mistakes that you learn. Though the apprentice is not yet able to forge his handle, he has already assembled several swords with recycled material. This one was made with parts of an old vacuum cleaner. After six months of work, here is the replica of Master Yoda's sword. There are shock detectors. There are also motion sensors. And the blaster shooting parades, the laser gun. This is just for fun. George Lucas Universe is also conquering the sport world. Up until now, the Jedi weapon had been a mere toy. Today, the lightsaber is becoming a martial art in its own right. Last May, the very first European Cup brought together 135 Jedi. The Knights are facing off in a very real tournament, a sport which is becoming increasingly popular. Milan, Dublin, Stockholm, 16 academies have already been opened in Europe. In Paris, Ludovic dreams of opening the first school in France. This 32-year-old security guard is a big fan of Star Wars. He shares this crazy dream with Angela, his Australian partner of two years. Are you all right? Yes, and you. Yes, I'm okay. He has been dreaming of having an academy to teach things related to Star Wars. It was a little boy's dream. I don't remember who said this, dream big so that you do not lose sight of your dreams as you grow up. So I said to myself, I'll be a Jedi. To become real Jedi, the couple will do everything in their power. Tonight, they leave for 10 days of training in Italy. The prize is a diploma awarded by the great masters of the lightsaber. It's the course to become an instructor. This is what will allow me to open the school in Paris. We're both going to take the course. That way, we'll already have two instructors right from the start. What if you don't make it? Then, there will be no school or someone else. A Frenchman from Paris will have to succeed and open the school. We're going to work hard for it. Yes, we're going to work hard for it. My suitcase? is ready. If it works out, they are going to quit their jobs and change their lives. Go Ninja, go Ninja.
To reduce travel expenses, Ludovic and Angela leave by bus, because Jedi school comes at a cost, 2,000 euros per apprentice. Twelve hours of travel, 1,300 kilometers to Avigliano Umbro in central Italy. Out of sight, in a medieval village in Umbria, is the Jedi Academy, a unique school in the world. This is where future apostles are trained. For a week now, Ludovic, Angela, and 30 hand-picked students have been training from morning to evening to wield the lightsaber. This hand now is guided. Antonio is one of the instructors at the academy. He is number three in the world ranking. We think about this like a, a sort of a combat style, a real combat style. We're not doing choreography, okay, like in Star Wars. Every movement, every attack or every parry must be um, effective. Like the hero of Star Wars, the young Luke Skywalker, Ludovic and Angela are learning Shai Cho, one of the seven fighting styles in the saga. The first style that uh, Luke Skywalker learned from Obi-Wan Kenobi. And during the fight with Darth Vader in uh, The Empire Strikes Back, Strikes Back, you can see some movements that reminds you a little bit of Sicho. And go! Even hundreds of kilometers away, the existence of this school was not lost on Thomas. He too will take the instructor's test, but unlike Ludovic, he's mostly there to have fun. When I saw that there was a lights of a school that was opening, I was blown away. I said to myself, it's not possible. I immediately jumped at the opportunity, and here we are. It's a crazy adventure. It's not choreography or anything similar. No, it's really a combat sport. I'm not sure what to expect. There were lights of us anyway, so for me it was always going to be great. It's even better than I thought. Duels are no laughing matter. The Jedi imagine that their blade is a real laser, like in the movie. In fact, this is the main rule of this sport. Oh, a lethal touch. A laser cuts through everything it touches. An injury or a simple amputation. Three strikes to vital parts. It's over, Antonio won. Great. <laughs> you. Before getting to this level of combat, Ludovic is going to have to train hard. His mentor, Daniel, prepares him for his Jedi exam. Is Ludovic a good student? He has a lot of experience with martial arts, and I think that gives him the ability to be very responsive, very capable of observing the opponent. Daniel, he's good. He's been doing this for a long time. I would like to have someone who has an eye for correcting flaws. Eight hours of intensive training per day, a formality for Ludovic. For Thomas, it is another story. Everywhere hurts. I'm not that sporty. It's ten very intensive days here, and I can't feel my legs anymore. It's really hard. Here, all days are the same. After training, it's time for revisions. Tonight is the day before exams for Ludovic and Angela. Ten days of theoretical courses to be memorized, and to complicate things, fighting vocabulary is in Italian. Show me a sinistro. It's an attack on the left side. Yes. Okay. Otava. Otava. You go back, twist the lightsaber, go back and take the opponent's blade down. The couple has no room for error. If they fail, their school project will not see the light of day. Do you think you have mastered these techniques for now, or do you feel calm? No, Serene, no. I'm not overconfident. We need to work. We still have all evening and some time tomorrow morning. Is there a risk of failing? There is always a risk. That's why we came together, so we have a 50% chance. 
At nightfall, the chivalrous nature of the students is awakened. Their academy is transformed into a combat zone, where Jedi and Sith, these soldiers of evil armed with red sabers, clash. In the shoes of a knight of peace, Thomas faces the dark side of the Force and is living a waking dream. For many fans, the Jedi are more than just fighters. They embody a spiritual model. So much so that a religion inspired by the movies was born. Reality surpassed fiction for the first time in England. In 2001, hundreds of thousands of British people declared themselves as Jedi during the national census. In England right now, there are 180,000 people who identify as Jedi Knights. Yes, yeah, that's right. In the census, during the census, they listed Jedi Knight, Knight as right their religion. Jedi Knight. I hate to tell you this, but it's only a movie. But it's not, Eamon. It's not. It is, it is a very strong uh, belief system. It is our religion, it's what we follow. So to us, it's entirely real. The practitioners are called the Jedists. It's difficult to know how many they are, but it is estimated that they are more than 500,000 worldwide. There are still only a few followers in France. This summer in Metz, dozens of Jedists paraded behind Yoda, the most mystical Star Wars characters, who stands here as a religious leader. A parody of a procession to request that the Jedi religion be recognized in Elsa's Lorraine. Where there is passion, there is serenity. Where there is chaos, there is harmony. Where there is death, there is strength. Frederick has been a Jedist for eight years. Like all the faithful, he feeds his faith with sermons posted by the masters on the internet. A virtual temple. The only way for followers to practice their religion, Alexander Orion is the pastor of the Jedi Order Temple. The first thing he teaches is the Code, the equivalent of the Ten Commandments. There is no emotion, only peace. There is no ignorance, only knowledge. It is a religion without God, without a divine being or a superior being. There are no prohibitions like in monotheistic religions. There is a freedom to be yourself. What do you believe in? We believe in the Force. This evening, Frederick is hosting two friends who are fans of the saga. Hey, hi, how are you? It's a ritual. Before New Star Wars, they watch all the previous movies. If for Jonathan and Frank, it's an opportunity to plunge back into childhood. For Frederick, it's a more spiritual experience. The lines in the movie sound like a prophecy. There is a founding text. It's the movie. Since we have Master Yoda's words, we have a text. I will try. No, don't try. Do it or don't do it. There is no trial. Judaism is based on these kinds of lines. It is a mixture of somewhat indigestible ingredients. Firstly, a bit of Freud. It's very psychoanalytic. A pinch of mythology, a spoonful of Buddhism. We find the very essence of Zen Buddhism. A good dose of Christianity. This is where it reminds me of Christ who, finally, when confronted with Pontius Pilate, preferred to let his guard down. He's not ready. Jonathan identifies with this mixture. He does not believe in the Force but identifies with the values of the Jedi. The movie is a life lesson. It's a lesson in philosophy. So whether we call it a philosophy or a religion, choosing this way of life is not surprising. This is where we see that Star Wars is more than a movie. It contributes to what we can call a contemporary myth. In Italy, in the Jedi Academy, it's the big day. In a few minutes, Angela and Ludovic are going to be judged by their instructor. Good luck, everyone. Not forgetting the traditional rally cry announcing the start of the tests. A good one in heaven. For half an hour, 30 Jedi apprentices are tested. Angela will be tested on her weakest point, combat. The instructor does not not go easy on her. Be more aggressive, Angela, more aggressive. Ludovic is tested on theory. Please show me all of Shai Cho's movements. The light position is the guard position. 
The masters know that his flaw is pedagogy. Taking the role of an instructor, the student must reassure them about his ability to teach. Stay high. You go up, and when he reaches here, you should not push it by being a bit too low. At the end of his performance, Dob sets in. It was not perfect. I am not completely happy, but it should be fine. After half a day of examination and a few hours of deliberations, the jury is going to give its verdict. In the group, the atmosphere is rather tense. Last year, 40% of students failed, and it's off to a bad start. Giorgio Santi. You failed. Luke. You failed too. It's the two Frenchmen's turn. You passed the exam. You were very good as a team. Lou Davik, you are a very physical athlete. On the other hand, Angela, you, you have a great ability to communicate and you are very delicate. The couple passed the exam with flying colors, a relief after months of preparation. Thomas is also becoming an instructor today. Thomas, you passed too. This year, half of the students passed. For the Frenchman, it is the promise of a new life. What does it represent for you? It's the first step. With the diploma, we'll be able to open the School of Paris. It's the beginning. In his village, north of Lille, Thomas got up at dawn. The lightsaber is not enough for him. Today, he will wear the skin of a jetty. Let's sort out what you'll take. With Cassander, his partner of two years, they share a passion for cosplay. Science fiction costumes. Me, I'm more into making latex masks, anything that is armor. But Cassandra is not. I took care of the sewing, so anything that's a Jedi jacket or toga, the gaiters are also for Thomas. Anything made from more complicated material, I'll leave that to you. Time for 40 minutes of makeup. For neophytes, it's not obvious, but Cassander is disguised as a Jedi. An alien called Kit Fisto, who appears in the animated series Clown Wars. It took them six months to make the costumes. In a few hours, the couple will take the stage for a big cosplay contest. If then if she hadn't liked Star Wars, it's okay. You would have just left me. Not at all. It's a good point. We have a common passion. I think it strengthens our relationship a bit more. Wow, super great. Magnificent Cassander. It is the first time that Thomas's mother has seen the costumes and Cassander is making an impression. It's great, with the ammo and everything. It's amazing, I love it. They're headed for Ghent in Belgium, more than an hour and a half away. On the way, the convoy does not go unnoticed. Especially Cassandra, aliens in the back seat. After 800 meters, the exit on the right, then on the left you should take. Master Yoda's voice comes from the GPS, but the Jedi guide isn't of much help to Luke. To the left or to the right? Focus. The right leads nowhere. To the left? Before entering the fair, Thomas changes into a Jedi. He will be General Imagundi, a hero of the Clown Wars. I hope we will win a small prize. The FACTS, it's the biggest gathering of science fiction fans in Belgium the temple of geek culture, visited by 40,000 people every year. It feels as if we're about to enter a movie. For Star Wars fans, this is one event you don't want to miss. Everyone here knows Kit Fisto and Emma Gundai. As soon as they arrived, they caused a sensation. In her wake, Cassander even turned some heads. At every step, they are stopped by fans of the saga. 
Hey, I love your costumes. Are you interested in taking a picture? Of course. Can we lie on it? Only girls, so you can. That big slug is Jabba, a crime lord well known to fans. A collector photo in an official decor signed by George Lucas himself. It's terrific. I have some very interesting things. I have the photo of the moment he signed. That's the proof that it's him. <laughs> Another privilege granted. Normally, no one is allowed to ride this rusty machine and for good reason. It's the jet bike from Episode 7, which can only be seen for a few seconds in the trailer. It's time for the cosplay parade in front of hundreds of informed spectators. Just before going on stage, Cassandra has a little problem. Her paint is peeling off. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. Apply a coat of paint. It is the biggest competition that the couple has participated so far. They've been working on their choreography for weeks. In front of the judges, they have to be perfect. Jedi dancing to Michael Jackson. Nobody had ever seen that before. It was good. You did really well. Congratulations. Thanks. Great. We felt that Cassandra stressed a bit at the end. Yes, that was the part of the choreography I was less familiar with. A small detail that the judges missed. Thomas and Cassandra win the award for best team costume out of 40 participants. A little kiss. That's my nose. Six months of work for five minutes of show. The couple is already thinking about the next costume. Like millions of fans, they are eagerly awaiting the release of Episode 7 to put themselves in the shoes of the new Jedi.